Hello, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melanin Nostalgic Runner, and we are back again for another review. This is Real Housewives of Potomac, season eight, episode 21, and this is Reunion Part Three. And um, before we get started, um, I just want to thank everyone who has been following um, this, my reviews for this particular um, show. I'm not exactly sure next season if I'm going to continue to watch the show or not. Um, there does, it seems very clear to me that there is going to be a cast shakeup um, because um, I did see that Robin did actually officially confirmed she's not going to be returning back to the show and then same thing with candace um so two of like the pieces that were holding things up are going to be out of the show and part of me is slightly curious to see how giselle is going to behave without having um her sidekick on by her side but I guess also, too, I'm not sure if I want to continue to watch if Ashley's still going to be there because she technically will still have another sidekick through Ashley. Um, and I also do want some of these other things from this reunion to get addressed. And I personally don't feel right reviewing a show where certain things are just out there that are pretty toxic that are not being addressed. And um, I've talked to some of my friends who are non-black and they don't see it, but I think part of it is because they're non-black and they, it's things I have to explain, you know? Um, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the review. Now, um, we continue the show off the cliffhanger that Gordon had something to say and when I tell you, I really wish this particular segment would have been much longer, I'm kind of annoyed that it wasn't. Because to me, this for me was what saved the reunion to me. Like Mia and Gordon saved pretty much kind of the show this season along with the reunion. And um, Gordon actually revealed that he is bipolar and he has bipolar type one. And um, I guess for me, I have personal feelings with it because I do have close family members who are impacted by this. And um, for those who are not aware, um, that actually does even, um, not to put <laughs> my family's business out there, but does actually include my mom. So I've been around and dealt with people throughout my whole entire life because um, she's not my only family member, but there's other family members where that has been a thing. And it's pretty common in most communities, but I think it is especially super common in African American communities of it going undiagnosed or unrecognized. And so you just don't have answers for things. Fortunately, I come from a background where that wasn't the case, but, and I just have a very supportive family system and it really never was that, but it just blew me away that he got this diagnosis. And I mean, he's in his seventies. So he now is at this point where he's literally going back at all his behavior and seeing his move, his movements and the way he was working is pretty manic. And it makes sense because some of his decisions actually explains what happened with him and Mia in the business. You know, for so long, we thought it was Mia and Mia was, you know, being, this person and this way and that way and we get we had it all wrong actually mia really did care for this man and was basically doing her part as a wife of trying to cover all that up and waited until he was ready to reveal that and so what was really happening is he would go through these manic episodes and along with mania there's irritability and anger and um it sounds like it sounds like he's definitely more on the manic than depressive side. Um, so when he was going through these motions, instead of you know being angry per se, he would then be you know really really irritable and kind of hard to deal with. And he probably even had a little bit of paranoia there because that does lead to some paranoia. And he probably even thought his family was against him and everything else. And it sounds like from this segment, he did patch things up with his family because his family was aware of it. Um, that that's what was going on. Um, they just didn't put the business out there. They still are, um, part 
owners of the business. They just are no longer, he no longer has a CEO title because, you know, due to his mental state and his mental health, he can't really handle those responsibilities. So that's where the pay went down was from that. And it also actually explains what she was saying earlier about his impulsive, like, spending and him not managing his money well, because that is a thing as well. So, you know, we joke with Mia about her having a little bit of a lying problem and, or, well, uh, inter interesting relationship with the truth. Though that actually literally is still true, it seems like she was doing a lot of it to cover up and be a protective wife so it explains why all there's kind of a throuple going on now um mia once will always support him and she stated that she's like no he's still my family he's still my husband um even though they're getting a divorce she still wants to make sure he's taken care of and i think that was really all he wanted and that's why he even was the way he was he was afraid of being alone because he was kind of afraid of himself in a way it sounds like so there was a lot there it was very loaded and again i just wish we would have spent way more time on this segment because this is a conversation that is so much needed in the african-american community and really african diaspora as a whole because it's not really discussed as much and we kind of brushed over it and then went into the bs and i'm I, i'm not gonna hold you that i found that annoying and i kind of <laughs> i honestly would have been okay with just turning off the tv after this part of the reunion we could have just ended it here i <laughs> i'll be honest but anyway um i'm still gonna give you the rest of the review but that's kind of how strongly i felt about this segment because of course i have my own personal reasons why it called to me but anyway that's that answered a lot of the questions and gordon mia and inc they're now working well as like kind of a family union and gordon also stated that he is cordial with inc and gordon admits that if it wasn't for him not having his mental health under control he firmly believes that mia and him was still been together and mia didn't really disagree, but I think she didn't want to put any more of their business out there than they already have because, child, they shared a lot. So it explains everything and it also explains how Gordon and why Gordon, you know, lashed out and put their baby's business out there, unfortunately. Um, you know, because he stated when I'm go doing these outbursts, as a lot of times it's when I'm in, in still in the manic state, which honestly looking back it makes sense like it, it definitely checks out so yeah okay so then the next segment from there was the Neneka segment um we find out after they do like a flashback of her whole entire season that the IUI did not work so now they're going to be doing um the um, IVF um treatment um and uh, moving forward with that um and Candace has been like very helpful in making sure she gets that um, going and that's what's been happening. So she, um, although the, it wasn't her procedure that she had before was not successful, she's going to move, she's going to, you know, hopefully her and Ike will get, um, you know, the results they're looking for as far as having a family. Um, from there, they talk about the Wendy and the NECA situation and it doesn't seem like this is going to get resolved and i honestly think after watching this reunion i think neneka it's still a whole a bad case of horrible communication um wendy i love you girl but you're playing semantics i feel like she's playing semantics when it comes to the not knowing her um and same thing with neneka it's like they are saying they're 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 playing semantics and it's really annoying and i hate that um neneka let lalebe get in her head it and basically gas her to go after wendy and she didn't really need to do that honestly because she never did answer the question that wendy has been asking the whole entire time including during this reunion what has she done to her because um 
Nanek is still trying to paint the picture that Wendy was trying to block her from being on the show. And I just think there might be some truth to it because I think from Wendy's perspective, she might have thought that Nanek was being thirsty and using her name to get on the show, but like not in a genuine way. But Naneka literally kind of meant what she said, like, no, I've met you before. We don't know each other, but we know of each other. And really, that probably would have been a better way of saying it is that we know of each other and versus saying knowing each other. Because the knowing each other thing is truly some semantics, and that's kind of the beginning of the end there. And then they go from that to Ashley, um, the the. Ashley conversation with the NECA and um, basically the z xenophobia of it all and talking about specific Nigerian culture and the fact that Ashley brought it up. And Ashley still isn't really owning it all the way. She apologizes for it, but she's really not apologizing that hard for it. Because to me... Um, Nanek is still trying to cape for her. And while Wendy holds Ashley to the fire, like, well, if you know about this so well, you're the one who mentioned this, what does it mean? Um, and that's that whole talk about um, being shunned from the village and stuff like that. And I don't even feel comfortable talking about it, to be truth truthfully honest, because I don't know enough about it either. And Ashley just felt the right to be able to do it. And... Ike was even asked, like, so what does it mean? Like, Ike's like, no, you don't even you don't even mention it. It's like, it's one of those things that's so taboo, it should not be mentioned. Because Giselle was like, well, Ike, what, what does it mean? And Ike's like, no, that's not one of those things you should ever, it shouldn't even be talked about. That's how, how taboo of a subject it is. And I think that's right then and there where, like, Giselle, Giselle read the room enough to know, okay, well, I'm not going to go into it anymore. But Ashley still... It's just playing this whole dumb I don't know thing. And this is what bothers me about her. She always does that. And Wendy was trying to kind of get her to be like, yo, like you shouldn't have even felt the right to do that. And she's like, well, I apologize. And it's kind of like, girl, um, I guess I'm kind of annoyed with Ashley being there as a whole because throughout this whole reunion, all three parts, I literally kept asking myself, why is Ashley here? She did not need to be on this show. Honestly, like, Naneka gave more than even Ashley in this reunion to me. And even really, Kiana gave more than both of them. I don't think either of them need to be there, to be honest. But anyway, so they go from there to our Wendy and Naneka going to apologize to each other. No. It's, it's, it is what it is with that. Naneka keeps saying, I've tried my best to apologize, but not once. And I'm glad they didn't bring it up because I don't want to rehash it. But at the same time, not once did Naneka apologize for the shrine comment. And that's the part that Wendy's not saying it. But I think also Wendy's being very smart and doesn't want to rehash it because it shouldn't even be talked about on this show. None of it should be. And Andy acknowledged that this stuff was sensitive. It shouldn't have been talked about. Um, but I still don't think not enough was done here. And this is one of the many reasons why I'm not sure after this review I'm going to be watching this show again. So there's that. Okay, so then next, Kiana's on stage, and she, um, they kind of go over her um, season, her first time being on the show, and Kiana's, Kiana, um, so one of the first things that gets brought up is her having the best confessional look out of everyone, and she did, and then also how Wendy was the one who, how she knows everyone there, and um, who she um, get along with who she gets along with the best and does she not get along with anyone she pretty much gets along with everyone on the stage for the most part um you know it, it she's pretty much happy to be there and i i hope that this incident that happened towards the end does not prevent her from being full-time because i really want her on the show as full-time like she's one of the few that gets along with everyone 
but can also check you and clearly will check you. So I hope she really does, you know, get the chance to be full time despite what happened towards the end. Um, because honestly, I think after that instant, I think Ashley should really have to sit out next season because she, no matter what and how it happened, she's one who brought that BS to, you know, the ladies. Um, if she wouldn't have brought her friend who had no business really being there, no reason to be there, there would have been no reason for all, like, for how things end to end the way they did. So there's that. Um, also, the subject about um, Wendy not checking up on her while they're in the DR came up. And there's really no hard feelings. Like, you know, Kiana still is going to have Wendy's back. Wendy's having Kiana's back. They're, they're a unit there. Um, so I think that was good. Um, but really, that was pretty much that segment was um, really all the ladies talking about, you know, she's talking about how she got to know the ladies. And she had a good time on the show minus, well, the last thing that we saw her. Okay, so next we're at the Wendy segment. And Wendy's segment was interesting. Um, so w one of the questions came up about her just sticking with one thing. And one of the things, she, and so we find out she's actually going to be letting go of one of her many things that she does. And one of the things she is planning on letting go of is she's going to she's gonna stop being a professor because she wants to be around for her kids because um, they are getting older and she, you know, her being a hustler and kind of being an entrepreneur, she has missed out on a lot of things and she's, you know, kind of having a little bit of regret with that. And I kind of wish that would have been talked about more, but they didn't talk about that too much more. Um, we talk a little bit more about the talk show that she has and we do find out that she still does have the candles. Um, and then I think the subject in the NECA and Wendy kind of came up a little bit again here. Um, but besides that, that was pretty much all they kind of gave Wendy. It was a pretty short segment. There really wasn't much to it. Because, I mean, they didn't really feature um, Wendy that much this season. Because um, I think they're... I think they're trying to... I mean, they were trying to ice her out. So they weren't really featuring her so much this season. But... Um, also, I guess the other thing that I noticed when the husbands, because this just reminds me, when the husbands were on the stage, they didn't really talk too much about, you know, the husband's businesses as much as I would like. I know it's the Real Housewives of Potomac, but like we know um, Chris, well, for those who don't know, Chris has a really popular Instagram um, um, channel where he features the foods that he's making so he kind of parlayed you know the bad things that happened with him getting losing his job at the restaurant to doing it on social media and I wanted to hear more I mean I know we talked a little bit about to Happy Eddie about his job but I wanted to hear more about that and um, and Gordon kind of had got a moment but the other husbands really didn't so much and Ike and also too we never really did talk about Ike and the NECA's dynamic as being newlyweds or anything. So there's just a lot of that was just left on the table, in my opinion, when it comes to this um, reunion. Um, not that it really matters, because I think, you know, overall the season, we know the season was lackluster and it wasn't given what needs to be gave. But I guess also, it's to me, it seems like Andy doesn't really see it for NECA because he really wasn't giving her much time at all. Like, I, that I did really catch it. Um, so there's that. So next we go to the Ashley segment. And really, this segment did not need to be as long as it was. I think the only reason why it was much longer because she had that incident at the end, which is why I'm just kind of side-eyeing you know, the idea that she didn't know that the mess was going to happen. I don't think she knew it was going to happen the way it happened, but I think she did definitely do what she did for mess to occur, if that makes any sense. Um, so I guess my whole thing with her is that um, they kind of went into, like, is she going to really get a divorce from Michael? And she's saying um, that he's narcissistic and... 
Um, now she really is going to try to get this divorce. And now she's a little bit more prepared. And this time around, she should be entitled to some money and compensation. But again, I have a tough time believing Ashley because she said last reunion she wasn't getting anything. And, the, and then before that, she said she was. I think she's just saying whatever so she could stay on the show. I, I don't really believe Ashley, honestly. And if it wasn't for that final event, there would be no reason for her to still to even be on this couch. Like, I'm just kind of, I'll be honest, I'm kind of, when she talks, I check out. Like, I kind of don't care all the way. And that's not how it should be when you're watching someone on a show. But that is what she is to me. I'm kind of just like, I don't care because I think you're full of, I think you're full of it. So they talk about, um, her and then the talk about her massaging his feet at night and stuff like that. I just didn't care. I don't care about her and the Michael situation at all. So I wrote next to her Ashley segment, why is she here? And that's kind of how I feel about it. So next we had to then within Ashley's segment, of course we did have to talk about the incident and it just, I just was triggered by the whole entire segment. And this is where the clip came out about how like Giselle is blaming everyone, but Ashley, the one who brought the mess there. She blamed, um, Wendy when Wendy had nothing to do with anything. And Mia had to chime in. It's like, no, Wendy didn't even have anything to do with this. This doesn't even make any sense. And Kiana even got blamed. And I'm just like, you know, you're not really checking. I feel like Kiana at that moment, because she was still there, should have been checking Giselle. Because I think that what... So let me take a step back. So when um, Kiana got sick whilst they were at the DR and Giselle checked up on her, Wendy and Candace are both trying to tell Kiana that was strategic. She doesn't really care. And... Fast forward to this incident, now she's blaming Kiana for her getting assaulted first and then retaliating. So, to me, that checks out that Wendy and Candace are right. She doesn't care about you. And we find out during this incident that everyone checked on Kiana minus Giselle. And Giselle, I mean, yes, we know her dad was going through some things, but she's still, a phone is a phone. You can, you, you, um, we're checking in enough to know what happened. So you still could have just made a phone call and you didn't do that. So there is that. Um, also Ashley is still trying to blame Candace. Even Mia to a certain extent was trying to blame Candace because we find out that, um, Deborah, was trying to start things with Mia as well, but Mia just, you know, turned, didn't, didn't engage with her like that. She was like, no, you're a queen. She kind of, you know, double, she kind of um, double back. She did not um, stand in what she said originally about um, what um, Deborah confronted her about because Mia also was talking mess about Deborah, says she was like a four. And she was like, no, we're all queens. That's what Mia said. And that's kind of what squashed and ended it. And, um, you know, Candace is like, I wasn't going to do that. I said what I said. I'm not changing it. And Ashley's still trying to say that her mouth is what's causing her to get in trouble. It's like, no. Like, I would expect for you to have friends that are grown enough to have enough self-control to not use her hands when when words are the only thing that's at play. And I just, no one really is calling out Ashley and her BS other than really Kiana. Um, Wendy kind of was quiet in this segment and I'm kind of just like, Wendy, you had a lot to say when this was all happening, you know, before the incident about her inviting Deborah, but you're not saying anything now. So I just wish, I really wish Ashley would have got more of her foot, uh, feet um, held to the fire, and she really didn't. It really came across that Candace was the one who was getting kind of attacked yet again. 
And I don't blame Candace for wanting to leave the show after this because she is very clear she doesn't have any support. And Candace even said it kind of in her own way herself. She's like, I didn't expect anyone to really, you know, defend me. Um, Kiana did, but she didn't have to, but I wasn't expecting that. I'm on my own. I know I'm on my own when it comes to this show. Um, and as she's crying and all that, I was so disgusted about how Robin was looking. And I'm glad Robin got fired. She deserved to get fired based off of how she was looking in that smug attitude of hers. So, um, yeah, I was just kind of over this segment. This is the segment where I was kind of like, yeah, I'm good with, um, I'm good with, um, I I'm not sure if I'm going to be watching the show again. It's, it's part of that. And I'm also good with Candace, you know, leaving the show because, they're going to, you know, cause you to lose other opportunities because of the ignorant behavior that they want you to engage in. So then Kiana gets emotional as well because we know Kiana got the worst of it when it comes to assault of it all. And Ashley gives like, honestly, to me, it feels like it's such a half-hearted apology. It's like, girl, this woman had to get stitches on her face because she got hit by a class by your friend and this is your apology. I was like, girl, if you don't save it, and Kiana kind of checked her. She's like, yeah, I think you're the queen of post-drama um, apologies. So, like, basically, I, I, that's not what she said all the way. But she kind of said, like, you love to do an aftermath apology. Like, you stir up the trouble, introduce all the mess, and then really be like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe that happened. What happened? And I just wish that would have been called out. Um Kiana did a little bit, and then she kind of made it nice a little bit. I made it nice, if you know, you know. Um, but she tried to make it nice a little bit and, you know, push, you know, cleaned it up a little bit what she said. I really wish she would have stood in it, but I know that's not what the motivation of this reunion is. They're supposed to be resolving things. But in her case, I think there's more that she needs to resolve with Ashley because I don't think Ashley's apology, her, her apology did not come off to me as genuine. Um, whether it was or not, that's a whole nother thing, but I'm going to need a little bit more emotion behind your apology considering the fact that I got assaulted and my pretty face got messed with. Like, there's that. And then Kiana did, um, before Kiana got, like, exited the stage, she um, gave flowers to Karen for taking care of her. And Karen was like, of course, this is what we will do. And then, you know, thanks everyone for checking in on her, including Mia. And everyone checked up on her minus Giselle. And Giselle gave that excuse about her dad, even though a phone is a phone. And this is where I realized, okay, we could have just kept Kiana on this show and everyone else, like Ashley and Nineka could have left the show. They didn't need to be on the show. And then really from there, um, they kind of wrap up the reunion pretty quickly and kind of abruptly of trying to um, see if there's any resolve with anyone. And really with Candace and um, Robin, there's no true animosity like that, but they both said it's going to take time. Um, and they're both pretty neutral to the situation, which is ironic because those are two that are not going to be on the show next season. Everyone else, no resolve. Um, but there really is, because Candace's not going to be in the show, the only person that doesn't have really any resolve is Wendy with Naneka and Wendy with Giselle at this point. Um, everyone else um, seemed to be okay. But because um, Andy asked, this is opportunity for people to try to take accountability one more time. And Giselle, of course, was not going to do that. And I love that Candace clocked and said, like, yep, your narcissism is so unreal. Because Giselle, in her delusional mind, was like, I can't wait till this airs. As if, like, this is going to make her look good when it's the opposite. It actually made Candace look... This was Candace, like, Kobe's game. Kobe's swan song game. It was that. Candace came on top, came off on top, and now she's out. And Giselle, you got exposed for being the true mean girl you are. But anyway, that does conclude the review of the show. Um, please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melanin Nostalgic Runner. And I will see you next time.
Bye.